So cool. Uh, do you feel like digging into contracts now? Is this a good time for that? Sure. I think that is a big topic that we've <laughs> been challenged with recently. Um, most of our weddings, we do what we call a group contract, which is mean where you're blocking space. Mm-hmm. You know, years ago, we used to kind of wing it and say, oh, just invite everybody and there'll be rooms at the hotel, especially if you're picking a big hotel and you're a year plus out. But with the demand and travel, most hotels are running at full occupancy. Um, and the worst case scenario is you send out your invitations and start planning and booking and all of a sudden the hotel's full and you can't have your wedding there. So that's our biggest fear. So really encourage our guests, um, you know, our brides and grooms and couples to do a group contract. That way you have the space, you have the rates, it's locked in, it's not going to go away. And then, you know, if for some reason prices went down, we can usually renegotiate the contract because that's always people's biggest fear. It's like, what if a better sale pops up? Mm. That's something we can, a challenge we can overcome. But if the prices go up or space goes away, there's nothing we can do about it. You can't go back. Mm. So what we're running into, though, is brides and grooms and couples are doing these contracts and they have the terms and the dates and everything on there and they're not paying any attention to it Mm. Mm. read your contracts bride friends please and thank you no it's a lot of paper but you gotta sit ours is the one that we we are totally transparent so i send my couples exactly what the hotel sends me so there's nothing Nothing to be confused about. It's all just exactly what the hotel sends me for terms. Okay. So the big part is, and and it's only a few pages. I have it literally dumbed down to just, because you'll lose me after a couple pages. So I have it where it's just down to a few pages. So really the main things are to pay attention to attrition dates. So this resort may hold those 25 rooms for you, but at some point they're going to want them back. And if you don't give them back to them by that attrition date, you now have purchased more rooms than you need. need. Yeah. So part of my job, and I consider probably one of the most important jobs, is to really know that contract and constantly, you know, keep track of who's booked, how many rooms you have left, what your attrition dates are, and make sure those rooms are released. Because the last thing I want is a couple to come to me and say, we didn't need those rooms. Why didn't you release them? Mm. So it's a group effort. You know, it's me reminding them, but it's amazing how we'll get down to say, you know, there's five rooms that are unsold. I'll go to the bride and groom and the couple and say, um, you know, we have five rooms left. Or do you want to give those back? No, I think so and so is still going to go and this person's going to go. And I'll say, you know, if they don't go, you're going to buy their room. And the couple will say, oh, it's okay. They're definitely going to go. Right. You know, so we always get to that point where I have to be like bean girl. <laughs> to say, like, hey, you have to release your rooms. Um, so I think that's a biggie that I think a lot of couples just aren't paying attention to. And I think COVID maybe has played a role in that is everybody thinks, oh, if I just ask nice or if I just... You know, I can say it's because of COVID they decided not to go. They'll waive those penalties. Not anymore. Mm-mm. You know, this you signed a contract and the resort either wants that room back to resell it or they're going to charge you for it because now they don't have time to resell it um, or yeah. they need it for other weddings. So, yeah, so that's, that's a big. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, and yeah, you have that, that scary look on your face, like contracts are scary. They're not scary. Well, no, it's scary for have. me. <laughs> it's scary for me because I, it, I probably have more PTSD because I spend the time like with coaching and going like, you gotta, like, I know you really want this to happen. You want these people to like come, but at some point you have to just understand and put that in like, be okay with understanding that this is their responsibility 
And yeah. you're only going to make things worse if you, in addition to them not coming, you end up losing money about it. Like you're only going yeah. to make the issue that much worse. And I know you really, really want them to be there and it'll be the world. But unless you're willing to pay for them, Mm -hmm. then it's such a small amount. Again, like that, just throw that deposit on there. If you can't throw that deposit in the grand scheme of things, it's just not going to happen. And guests don't know how to, like some people just don't know how to say they can't, they They won't. They can't say no. They can't can't say no. And that's why I do also just push to, even when it comes to these deadline dates, don't like stress people out, if that makes sense. Like, or yourself. If people... If they got an email saying, hey, you got to pay this, for you to have to hound them to do it, then you're really adding a pressure um, yeah. that you it's, really don't mean really, to do. Yeah. 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 It's a really an etiquette thing, too. And it's it's mm. tough. It, it's it's uh because, you know, I, I just had one. And this is something I try to count. This is where I get into couples counseling. Because I have to say, the bride's saying, I know my best friend's going to go. And the groom's going, cut her loose. This man yeah, is. seriously. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, we get to that point where we have to give back those rooms. You have to just know that some people cannot commit. Whether it's work, family life, whatever. Financially, they can't commit. Um, let it go. And then a lot of times, people will add back on, like, right before. Yeah. Now, it's going to be, if it's available, and what current price is. But they were warned. Yeah, they were, they were warned over and over and over again. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But most couples, that that's one of the biggest challenges I have is I have to say, read your attrition dates, look at your contract. Yeah, I didn't make this up. We have to give these back. So yeah, contracts are wonderful because you've got that space, you've got those prices. Don't be scared of them, but help us help you. Yeah, and just read the arrest your. <laughs> yeah, and um, I asked you to send me like an example of the contracts now for me to see. And no, it it, yeah. it isn't it isn't long at all. It's not bad, but it's stuff. Like I also just feel like there's a section of like what's not included, what fees are not included, or you know, you just want to know what you're doing. And even as much as you say are, are like taking care of us, or your you know whatever your agent or your Dusty Pro is, they're going to take care of you. You want to still know what's in there and then things happen so if for some reason the room that you were thinking isn't on there or if a date's a little off or something you never know so Mm -hmm. you want to just read it and make sure that you have a complete understanding of what's what um I had a whole spreadsheet situation on top of it I'm a spreadsheet like google sheets is everything to me yeah (laughs) even with our move right now like it's a it's a whole thing and if it's oh not on a spreadsheet, it doesn't make sense to me. So I would look at this and I would, being me, put it into a spreadsheet. But you just yeah. need to know and read it. Pour some wine and sit. Yep. Go through the it, things. I, I love when my couples reach out to me and say, can we get on a call and go line by line through this contract? I yep. am happy to do that. Because to me, that means they're paying attention. Mm-hmm. They are double checking everything they're understanding what they're reading and what they're getting into and I feel like the whole process just is so much smoother but it blows me away how many times I'll send out a contract and like seven minutes later they send it right back signed here's the deposit I'm like there is no way there's no way that you even looked at that but I think that kind of goes with the wedding part of it because these couples are excited and they're ready to go they want to get the ball rolling yeah but um you and know, they that's, like, that's, and they that's, trust that's, you. It's like they've got it, so that's what they're it. here for. They've got it, yeah. and that is true. But at the same time, you need to. The only way for you to know that they've got it is if you know what it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is, for sure, for sure. And again, yeah, and it so, and yeah. it makes our job easier if you understand what we're up against because we're the ones sending the reminders and talking to the guests and, um. You know, I I have one coming up. She's got 80 rooms blocked and like four people have booked. And we have to do like a, you know, a sit down of these people have to book or you're going to do this. (laughs) So I don't want to make those conversations. So and I know it's just a matter of she's not worried about it because everyone's like, yeah, we're going, we're going. 
Yeah. Yeah. But we're yeah, gonna go. You're not going until you did you put your deposit down? Like I've always yeah. your RSVP, like you said, is the deposit. And deposit. I think also just some people just don't have the personality. Sparky says hello. Sparky. <laughs> <laughs> but they We're don't have the personality. Sparky. <laughs> Seriously, we have to say hello to Sparky. Hi Sparky. Uh, <laughs> but but they don't like they I've had to kind of like tell some friends sometimes they're like, I don't want to bother or I don't want to ask. And it's like no, 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 no. Like, that's what they're here for. Like, mm-hmm. you, you know, you're part of the team, you know, yeah. they, they've hired you, you're there, you, you know, in essence, like work for them, work with them. So yeah. if they have a question about what something means, then like, mm-hmm. if you y'all listening and watching, if you have a question, please ask. Um, yeah. I always just, tell my couples, let me be the bad guy. Yeah. I'm happy to be the bad guy yeah. because it that's where it gets a, a lot of couples will come to me and they say, I think I could do this on my own. You know, mm-hmm. I've booked hotels, I've booked Ooh. travel and they're like, but now people are trying to give me money mm-hmm. and I don't want to deal with other people's money. And it's weird harassing my friends and family for a deposit or an answer. Yeah. So that's where I end up having a lot of couples come to me at that point where they've already picked out the resort, they've already started the process, but they're just like, this is overwhelming with our friends and family. And it is, it's uncomfortable. So I will bug them for the money. (laughs) I will harass them. (laughs) And there's an element to it that I feel like no one, you don't really understand until you're in it because just a traditional at home wedding, for example, you send out invitations and Mm -hmm. that's it. Like, you don't really have to like are they coming or are they not you're not Mm -hmm. gonna continue to really have to stay on people as much yes you're kind of in the dark until you start to get those rsvps rolling in and yes people do take a long time but it's just a different element when it comes to there's so many moving pieces with the travel and you got to make sure that do you have your flights do you have your rooms how far on your rooms are you doing and even Mm -hmm. if you do a room block like if we were to be getting married in atlanta then hey y'all come we've got a room block boom done yeah. They're in charge of their flights. They're in charge of the room. They could choose to do the room block or they could not. But when it just becomes just a destination wedding is it's an amazing thing. And it's so much that goes into it. But it also yeah. creates this element of having to stay on top of people yeah. that um, I want every, like we all have to deal with it no matter where you're getting married. So like no matter where it is. You got to deal yeah. with that, right? Once you decide to go destination. It is. It. And that's why, you know, I I think we're so busy is is the people who say, oh, I can do it on my own. And then they're like, uh, uh-uh, I'm mm-hmm. in over my head. I need somebody else to be the go between <laughs> and to, t- to check all those boxes, you know, to yeah. make sure the contract is correct. And we hit all those dates and we didn't forget anything and we didn't, um, you know, forget any person or their payment all that good stuff so that's a huge piece of it and and i think again why we're, we're so busy but um you know yeah. contracts are, are are good but you need to read them yeah and there's so. an element there's a um portion of the contract that talks about like the travel protection and the insurances and i've had mm-hmm. questions about that because of how COVID went is is trip insurance still a thing that people should be yeah. taking in or can you still do that? Yeah, it's funny. It's really, um, we thought during COVID, after COVID, like everybody would get travel insurance. We're just like, this will be a no brainer. Every It'll just be something <laughs> everybody does. I am shocked at the amount of people who don't get travel insurance because I think the media didn't do a really good job you know, they put out a lot of stories about people who had travel insurance, who didn't got kind of burned because it was COVID wasn't covered or they didn't have the right insurance. So that scared a lot of people away. Um, but I've only ever dealt with one type of insurance. And if you ask for a suggestion on insurance, I will only suggest one type to you, which is the any reason. And that way it didn't matter if it was COVID, didn't matter if you had the sniffles, didn't matter if you just didn't want to go. Broke up and it I don't want to go. Right. <laughs> any yeah, any reason. So that's the only kind of insurance that we've ever dealt with. And that's what we had anyone who was insured through COVID had that. And it was just no questions asked. We didn't have anybody lose a penny mm. through 
COVID because of that. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend it. And there's a couple different kinds or one that gives you a future travel credit, one that gives you a cash back. And we'll explain all that. We put all that on all of our invoices and everything and all the um, quotes so people can decide. But I have the mentality for some people right now. It's like, oh, I'm going. I don't care. I'm going. I'm not yeah. getting insurance no matter what. So yeah. it's really kind of funny. It, it's it's just still a divide where I thought that'll be a no brainer. Everybody right. will buy insurance now. So, but yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. out there. We offer it. It's still a thing. Oh, and it's not expensive. You know, most it's like 50 to $150 a person right. and it even covers you like in destination. So if you sprained your ankle, it covers like $3,000 in medical costs. It covers, you know, if you had to be brought back home, all that good stuff. So yeah. always a good idea. Highly yeah. recommend it. <laughs> yeah. When you're uh, trying to save a couple of dollars, a couple hundred, you all know what I mean? But yeah, <laughs> that's, but. that could be something like, nah, but when you need that, um, you need that. And the other thing is kind of the idea of deciding to get it later is like, in my mind, like you're thinking about a car or something, or I don't know, like, can't, you can't insure, like you're deciding I want to do it now. Like once right. you make your deposit, can you add your insurance later? Or is that like a- hey. Okay, I know I'm interrupting and you probably got your notepad out by now. And if you don't, this might be a little quick second for you to go grab it. But I have to take a moment to thank our amazing sponsor who you're sitting here listening to, Sarah Klein and Time for Travel. So by now you're starting to understand the value of a destination wedding travel agent and time for travel is an amazing choice. Sarah's been in the business for over 20 years and she offers intimate experiences just for the two of you and also the grand events for your family and friends. And her Instagram account, if you haven't checked that out, is everything. Time for Travel handle all of our travel for our destination wedding in Mexico and our honeymoon in Jamaica way back in 2017. And our guests still rave about her and have used Time for Travel for personal vacations since then. As you guys know, I only partner with companies that I truly believe in and I'm proud to have Time for Travel on our team as a Desti Pro, but also as a Desti Partner. So thank you, Sarah, for sponsoring the show. You can find out more information about Sarah and Time for Travel and get a free consultation at timefortravel.com and tell her your best Desti bride friend only sent you and they'll take extra special care of you. All right, back to the interview. Yes and no. Um, there is insurance that you can add literally up to the day of travel, but it's going to have limitations and it's going to be more expensive. Okay. The any reason insurance has to be added with your initial deposit. Okay. Because I always tell people when they call me whining <laughs> close to travel and say, why can't you insurance? I'm like, it's like wrecking your car and then calling the insurance company yes. and saying, I'd like to buy right. car insurance. Yeah. It doesn't work that way because right. they know if you're calling now asking for a chance, it's probably right. because What's going something's on. Up. Right. Yeah. Right. Or, or yeah. I'm yeah. sick. I, I have an abscess tooth. I need dental insurance. Mm. Yeah. And it doesn't work that way. So, yeah. yes, it's still possible, but there's definitely more limitations for sure. So, okay. But, but that's, we'll, we'll walk them through that as well. <laughs> oh. Cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. And if you all have any questions about contracts, or really anything, Sarah is available. All of the links are on Dusty Land and will be in the comments of the podcast and the YouTube channel. Um, I am excited. I'm just like, I've been scanning this as if y'all can see what I'm doing right now. I'm scanning, <laughs> I'm scanning the contract even more just to kind of look and see. But I feel like from what I remember, it's very, it's very clear anyway, when it comes to, and this is a question that's been asked before, but just, we originally talked about this when it comes to room blocks. Mm -hmm. If I book, if we block off 50 rooms and then we end up needing 55, mm -hmm. but we don't know that until six months later, mm -hmm. what kind of, what happens in that space? You have to go back to the resort, right? It depends. There's a couple of ways we do it. Um, a lot of times we can kind of sneak in those extra rooms mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, sometimes then you'll have some cancellations that might end up evening out. 
But certain um, resorts, if you go, they have tiers, you know, the 25 room, 40 room, 60 room. So if you're going to go into a different tier, mm. it may change. Um, they may want a second deposit from the group. They may want final payment a little earlier because kind of you're putting them at more risk by having more rooms out there. So mm. if you're just a few rooms over, three rooms, five rooms, a lot of times we can kind of slip them in. in. Yeah, and, and they won't renegotiate or do a new contract when we go back to them and say okay we need a block of you know 15 more rooms then typically then. they'll want to rewrite the contract um most resorts won't charge higher rates occasionally they will like if demand has really gone up or they're really short on rooms or it's around a holiday um but for the most part we're able to find a solution a wiggle around <laughs> so and a lot of if we get close, you know, say you blocked 50 rooms and we're at 48 and the bride and groom are like, whoa, we still have people to go. We can usually tell that sooner than later. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the suggestions that I always give my couples is we do this room block and usually the attrition and the terms are not to like, you know, maybe just a couple months before the event. Mm -hmm. But between us, we should come up with an RSVP by date. And it's just mm -hmm. a fake date that we fake. come up with just well, in to get advance the ball of rolling. the final date. Yep. You know, so say if you put out your invitations on November 1st, we might say by like February 1st, you want to have all of your guests who are planning to attend RSVP. So they've got those two or three months to reach out to us, give us the information, make that little $100 deposit. And then all of a sudden you booked 48 of those 50 rooms by that date and you still have core people who haven't booked. We know months ahead of time that you're going to need more rooms. And then we can usually go back and add those or renegotiate. Oh, so, okay. so that that's always been my workaround for, you know, not running out of rooms and making sure we get the contract done. Yeah, that oh. makes sense. Um, I know there was one point during the COVID crisis and everything where, and I don't, I guess it was a lot of times because of the limits on the numbers of rooms, but are are there are resorts booking up quickly like they used to? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're back to way pre pandemic levels of, I'd say almost every resort this fall for weddings um, are at hundred percent occupancy. Okay. So we have a big wedding this weekend at Hotel Escaret in Mexico and yesterday, you know, the people who were just like, I don't care. I want a garden view room, whatever, are emailing and calling us all day yesterday. We're here. It's fabulous. Do, can we get an ocean front? Can we move to the adults only section? I'm like, nope. They are a hundred percent booked for the next week. And the people are shocked. They're like, but I thought travel wasn't totally back. I thought it is mm, back, back again, baby. So. Crazy, yeah. crazy back. So a lot of people who were just like, I want the basic room in the beginning are trying to upgrade and we're not able to do it or add on. Because a lot of times we'll just do blocks for like four nights over the event. And then guests are like, oh, I'm going to make it a vacation. Let's do six nights, seven nights. Space isn't there. Yeah. So sooner the better. <laughs> so, so where are so people um, right now if, this is October 2022. If someone calls you right now and wants to get married, what's like their time? What should be their timetable? Can someone get married in April of 2023? 20 <laughs> That's it's funny. I've had a spurt in the last two weeks of people still contracting 23. Right. Um, I'd say honestly, spring into summer of 23 is kind about of. done. Like I okay. personally am not taking on any more 23 unless it's late fall. Okay. Um, so because it's just, the resorts are getting saturated. It's just busy. So if I was starting to plan a wedding right now, I would be thinking winter, spring 24. Okay. Is kind of the target. So, because I think etiquette is great to have like a year out. So you right. want to start planning maybe a year and a half out just so that way you get everything going and get everybody to notice. Um, we just contracted a February of 23 and their final payments in six weeks. I mean, they're going to, we held the rooms, we're going to send the invitations and then everybody has to pay in full. So they're realizing they're probably going to have a lower head count because not everybody can go, okay, I can pay this before Christmas. 
Right. For something for 20. Why is the, and that's the attrition date, right? Is that, is that what that date is? The final? Yeah. I mean, the resort for, in order to kind of plan a wedding, get everything going, get those rooms blocked, you know, we can add rooms closer in, but that block, they want to close that out about 70 days before the event. Oh, wait, wait, you so, said 23, right? Yeah. Oh, I yeah, Feb- so February. I keep of forgetting it's twenty. I keep forgetting it's twenty. I just said it was twenty twenty two, and that still blew my mind. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, okay. too. I have to remind myself. <laughs> I'm like, what? Twenty three. Lost two years. That's so know, far away from now. That is yeah. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Wow. So it's so it's a pretty quick turnaround, and that's what I try to warn everybody is. I know spring of twenty three sounds far away, but we're already like wrapping those up honestly we're already kind of in that mode of giving rooms back to the hotels and all that so it's definitely time to really focus on 24. yeah yeah how how much advance notice do you like for your couple to give their guests like when should invitations go out so it's never well there's a sweet spot i say about a year is mm-hmm. perfect. So I think you should start planning about a year and a half out. You should let guests know a year out because there's some people have to put in for a vacation. Mm-hmm. You know, they have to, they have slots and stuff, depending on what kind of job that they um, work at, they may have to jockey for dates. And then it gives everybody time to pay okay. and plans because final payment's going to be about 70 days before your event. Mm-hmm. So if you're giving everybody you know, a year notice, they technically already have less than a year to pay it off. So that's my, you know, so maybe even a little further out than a year. I think if you go beyond that, like I've already had a couple brides and grooms and couples come to me and want to do 2025. And I'm like, eh, let's start researching, but maybe not because if somebody sent me something for 2025, (laughs) I'll probably throw it in a drawer and go, (laughs) Yeah, I don't even know what life's going to look like in 25, so so there's a sweet spot. (laughs) And the other thing about, so 2025, I kind of always feel like you should wait a little bit because, like you said, resorts are always changing and things happen. Like, do you want to commit to a resort that far in advance as well? Because the resort that you're seeing now is going to be three years older or something at that point too, right? Right, right. How does that work? Like if a couple reaches out to you, do you kind of go hold off on that? Some suggestions and say, start doing a little research. But typically I'm like, why? Like, why are you waiting that long? Do you, you know, because if you need that many years to save up, then probably not a destination wedding couple. Right. (laughs) Like if, if it's really like that financially hard, you think for everyone in your group to get, um, to save up that long. So usually it's, it's a situation where they think it costs more than it does, Mm -hmm. um, you know, or they're just really kind of dreaming, but I find the ones that reach out that are really far out don't end up panning out so well. (laughs) So, right. Yeah. It's a spot. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, I knew you would come with amazingness and, and you did as usual. Thank you so much. Thank oh, this you. Was great. Definitely need to get on a live when I'm in somewhere fabulous. And uh, and I'll, one of your desks, I have to get on a dusty evening with you guys too. <laughs> yes, you definitely do. Um, and we've been talking back and forth about doing like an Instagram live situation too. So we've got to get that in maybe, you know, got some things going, happening in 2022 and now 2023 because it's basically 2023 now. So <laughs> it's crazy. It's just, full, it's just blowing by. It's just absolutely crazy. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been wonderful to see your beautiful face as usual. And thank hi, Sparky. Thank you. I know. And hi, Sparky. Uh, how can people reach you? I know I have the links, but what's your yeah. contact? What's your preferred contact? So email is great. I'm obsessed with email. So I'm always on there. And it's just info at timefortravel.com. But you can always send me on Facebook under Time for Travel or Instagram, Time for Travel. And it's Sarah Klein, Destination Wedding Pro. Um, <laughs> you know, so just, you know, shoot me an email is great. And then I love to just, you know, once I get the email of what your questions are, what you're planning, 
jumping on that Zoom call with a couple and really kind of diving in. And, and I'm always happy to just be like, you're not ready yet, or here's what you should research or whatever, you know, so because not everybody's, some of you are just searching and they're not really in that go mode. But um, so even if you're already picked the place, pick the date, and you're just feeling overwhelmed, I jump in a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh say so let me deal with those guests let me figure that out for you yeah so that's one of our favorite things to do let's just awesome. make it better yeah well thank yeah. you Sarah thank you it's great to see you and I will see you soon all righty mm -hmm.